Hi everyone, I'm Tanaz from foreverconscious.com and this is your weekly energy forecast for the week of July 11th. So this week we are still working with the energies of that Cancer new moon. That new moon happened uh, on the 9th, 10th of July. So as we start this week, we're still working with that energy. This new moon is really about new beginnings. And I know all new moons are kind of like new beginnings, but this one uh, even more so because it's the first new moon since eclipse season. So eclipse season opens up a new pathway. It shifts us to a higher level of consciousness. Maybe you're feeling that. And this lunar cycle kind of represents that first, uh, that first chapter, that first cycle from this new state of awareness. So if you want to bring fresh energy into your life, if you want to reset, if you want to uh, start over or you're kind of feeling like, you know, I want some fresh new energy and a change and I want to shift some of the things that I've been doing, this is really a wonderful week to do that. The new moon energy will still be on your side, especially in the first half of this week. So use that energy if you wish or if you want to. Uh, this week, we've got two other things happening. The first is the conjunction. So that's the uh, meeting of Venus and Mars. This happens every two-ish years. So it's pretty rare. It's pretty special. It happens on July 13th and they will be aligning in the tropical zodiac of Leo. So when Venus and Mars come together, it represents a rebirth energy. And Venus and Mars are kind of considered the two cosmic lovers in the sky. They represent the yin and yang, the duality of life. And so when they come together in this conjunction, it can manifest as rebirthing our own masculine and feminine, yin and yang type energy. It's sort of about finding a balance between these two states of being. Um, so if we think about this for a minute, this sort of yin and yang energy or feminine and masculine energy, you know, um, <clears throat> yin energy is wavy lines going with the flow, whereas that yang <clears throat> excuse me, masculine energy is straight lines, being really direct, you know, knowing what you want and going for it. It's these sort of two dynamics that we're called to bring balance to, that we're called to rebirth in our lives in some way. I've written an article about it and I go into a lot more detail about these kind of energetic qualities. Um, and so if you want, I'll pop a link to that below. You can kind of read up a bit, um, a bit more on that. But Venus and Mars coming together can also highlight relationships, the self and the other. You know, again, that duality can really come up, really be highlighted for us under this Venus-Mars conjunction. So really, you might be drawn to think about your relationships, the people that you keep close to you, um, finding some sort of rebirth energy in how you relate to other and how you're relating to yourself. So again, that's something that can be manifested under this alignment. On more of a sort of esoteric level, Venus and Mars coming together can also activate soulmate contracts and twin flame contracts. When I talk about soulmate, I'm not just talking about romantic, I'm talking about people that have come to um, you know, help our, the growth of our soul. Sometimes that's a, a lover or a relationship, sometimes it's a teacher, sometimes it's a friend, sometimes it's a parent, a stranger walking past us on the street. There, There's really deep kind of soul connections that never really leave us. And that can be activated too under this energy. So if you notice that, or if someone sort of comes into your life around this time, pay attention, might be something significant to that. Not necessarily, but just something to kind of stay aware of. So it really is a beautiful energy. It's also a very creative energy. You've got this Venus, which is all about beauty and love and money, um, sort of creating that sort of soft um, intuitive space. And then you've got this Mars energy, which is about being directed, taking action, pushing past our fears, knowing what you want, just going for it. Um, you know, being that sort of confident, fearless leader of your life. 
And it's kind of like, how can we balance these two sides of ourselves? They exist in all of us. They exist in all of nature. These two sort of, you know, qualities. How do we bring them into a state of balance? And if you think of the yin and yang symbol, there's a little bit of yin in the yang and there's a little bit of yang in the yin, right? So they need each other. Together they are whole. Together there's really only one. But the, on this, you know, physical 3D world, in this world, we view things. We can we have the gift, if you like, of viewing things from this lens of duality. So see if you can connect with that. Um, and again, if you want a little bit more, if you want to tap into that a little bit more, check out my article because I share some um, things that you can kind of do and look um, kind of more tangible things that you can look for. So that's the Venus Mars conjunction, very special, very rare, a nice energy to work with, very supportive, um, typically, especially with those relationship things. If you've got any relationship issues, it's a supportive energy. Then on the 15th, we have Chiron turning retrograde. Chiron is an asteroid. Um, it will turn retrograde on the 15th and it won't go direct again, I think, until sometime in December, December 19th, I believe. So it will remain retrograde for most of the year. Chiron is uh, an asteroid known as the Wounded Healer. That's sort of its uh, name, what it's known for in astrology. It is a power time in learning how to take the wisdom from our wounds. We all have wounds. Wounds can cut us deep. They can be painful. They can also never leave us. But it's Chiron's gift that allows us to source the wisdom from these wounds and to unlock the power that they can give us and how they can change and shift our lives for the better. And it's Chiron's energy that allows us to do that. When Chiron enters retrograde, we may uh, look over the past, look over some past wounds and delve a little bit deeper to unlock more wisdom, more um, potential from these wounds. And as the wounded healer, which is Chiron, very often when we tap into this wisdom, when we tap into this power that comes from these wounds, we, uh, we give ourselves the ability to heal, to not only heal ourselves, but to heal others. So Chiron energy is not about healing in the sense of that we're healing for perfection, that we're trying to be these amazing whole people. We already are whole. Your wounds don't make you any less whole. What Chiron wants us to do is it wants us to embrace these wounds as powerful portals, as powerful wisdom keepers, and to extract that information. And when it goes retrograde, it actually becomes easier for us to unlock and tap into some of that wisdom that might be hiding in those wounds of the past. So feel into that. It's an energy that we have, like I said, running for pretty much the rest of the year. However, like with all retrogrades, the day a planet or asteroid or whatever stations retrograde and then stations direct, they are the power days. So that July 15th will be a power day to really kind of connect and tune in with that energy. So that's kind of it for the week. We have that new moon, new beginning, fresh start energy flowing in. We've got this Venus and Mars energy asking us to find balance, you know, shining a light on our relationships, maybe activating some soulmate contracts for us. And then we have this beautiful Chiron energy, which is more of a linger in the background, but it's asking us to source wisdom and power from uh, wounds um, and, and to use them as a source of inspiration for ourselves and for others. So I hope that's helpful. I am Tanaz from foreverconscious.com. Thank you so much.